Hey now, bakers. Jose Lopez here, your baker and influencer. And welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. Well, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I try to keep it as simple as possible and give you information that maybe you can use in your facilities. And facilities, I'm talking about the high-speed lines, bakers, because that's where I'm at. I'm 34, 35 years in this wonderful industry of ours, working in large wholesale operations. So today I want to talk to you more about just flour, okay? The consistency of the flour you get into your facility. Are you checking it? Are you looking at your farina graph and your COAs as the flour is being delivered? Are you educating your people on how to read the graphs and the, the results that you get from those things? If not, I highly recommend you do. It's going to help you maintain a little bit more consistency in your dough development. So if you think about it, the flour company gets a little sample, anywhere from 50 to 300 grams of your sample of the flour that gets delivered, and they perform a mixing, okay, with a rotating blade and, and, a, and a mixer, kind of like the mixers that you have in your facility. And what it does is it records the RPMs on a chart on your, the computer, and it records the RPMs of how much force that motor or those blades are moving or forcing. Of course, as the dough gets together, kind of like your cleanup, as the dough gets together, the dough gets heavier, so it causes more force, and then it records there. As we keep mixing the doughs, it drops down. And then they take, tip, they take specific areas and record a number or a time, and then I will explain to that in a second. So really, they look at the arrival, peak time, departure time, MTI, and your stability. Those are the five that they're really looking at when they're looking at a Farino graph. I would start, the arrival time is just the time to the nearest half minute from the first addition of water onto the top of the curve to first intersection of about 500 broad vendor units consisting in line. That means that they adjust the water accordingly always to get to that 500 line. This is also referred to as the hydration time. So it's mixing the dose. They absorb to put the water in 58 to 60% usually typically and then they adjust it to that 500 line. That way it's always consistent at absorption levels, okay? So then they take what you would call your peak time. Your peak time is the time to the nearest half minute from the first addition of the water to the development of the dough's maximum consistency. That means that the dough is the tightest it can be. That means it's the more force, the more force that it takes for those mortars. So it records the peak time is the highest point, the highest point in that graph kind of like your mixer graph if you have one, or your cleanup time, where all the dough, all the flour and water has finally come together, and now it takes a lot of more force to create, okay? This is really an important part of, of the process. So the peak time starts in there. The departure time is the time, the nearest half minute from the first addition of the water up to the point where the top of the curve leaves the 500 BU line. In general, a longer departure time indicates strong flour. The next one, is what they call the Mixing Tolerance Index, or MTI. This one is critical. This is one of the ones that I used to look at when I received flour, and is one that I always guide when I'm helping on plants to let's start addressing and looking at it typically. The MTI, it takes the peak time that we just talked about, and it counts five minutes after that. And what it does, from the top of the curve to the peak to the top of the curve measured, five minutes after the peak is reached. The MTI is an indication of the mixing tolerance of flour, an MTI value of 30. So broad vendor units are liberated than 20. So it counts from five minute peak time, peak time to five minutes. How many broad vendor units did it drop? The higher the number, that means it dropped more. That means your flour is not going to be able to take as much mix. The stronger the flour, the lower the number, that means that that flour is stronger. So if you're typically getting an MTI of 30, a nice strong flower, and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, now you start getting a 15, what does that mean? That means an even stronger flower. Because you didn't drop that much in the barometer unit, so that means that that dough is still stiff and it needs more development. Okay, so people, I highly recommend to watch it and maintain no more than a five to seven degree plus or minus change. Of course, you don't want to be a negative five or seven and then a positive five or seven because your change is very different. So every load of flour, if you're consistently getting your 30, 35, you're probably not going to see a difference. But if you're getting a 30 and then you're getting a 40 and then you're getting a 20 
and then you're back to a 40, and then you're back to a 30, and then you're back to a 20. Even though they may still be within your spec, you're going to be all over the board in your mixing. And the problem is that the mixer operators that we have can't catch that until it's too late. A lot of times by then, you've already had three or four doughs come out before you notice, oh my God, I'm more undermixed or I'm overmixed. So MTI, the Mixing Tolerance Index, is a great, great tool to keep in your back pocket and educate your operators on, hey, it's okay as long as I'm here, but if I'm plus or minus 10, make sure that somebody knows about it and it's standing in front of that mixer to watch the development. Stability is the difference in time to the nearest half minute between the point where the top of the curve first intercepts the 500 line and at the point where the top of the curve leaves the 500 BU line. So that means it's just up through the curve and back down. Of course, the longer the stability number, the more you will think this flower is stronger and you need more mix, okay? So, so stability time is correlated with flower strength. Flower with long stability times are generally more suited for hearth breads, variety bread production, not to require longer mixing times. But your flower can change that much. Like I'm telling you, a 10 degree swing on your number is enough to at least be in front of that mixer so you can watch it, okay? So if anything, at least you have a beginning so, so you can see your development of your dough and not catch it when it's coming out of your oven. Because when you catch it coming out of your oven, it's a little bit too late. I'm telling you guys, educate yourself on understanding this, educate your receivers, your mixer operators on understanding what they're reading every load of flour and your consistency in your dough development it's going to just be outstanding. You'll be able to tell if, man, I need to watch it because I got to add mix because my mixing tolerance index number is lower. Or I got to, man, I got to watch it because I may have to cut mix to keep my same development that I was running on the last load of flour. So if you start anywhere, remember, start with the flour because that is the largest ingredient that you have in your formulation when you're producing bread and rolls. And it's the easiest to watch before you get it in there. The other thing that you need to do is make sure you're in communication with your flour mills. Make sure that they understand what you're asking for. The age of the flour, especially if you're getting flour brought in by trucks, are critical. It's critical. If you get a three-day-old flour or same-day-old flour compared to a five-day-old flour, two totally different flours, even though it was the same flour. As you know, flour with age matures and it's easier, better to process. Green, young flour is usually tougher and it requires more mix and development and you think it can take water, but it won't hold the water. And then it releases and you get some poor product, open quality, open crumb, blisters and such. So talk to your mill, keep in contact with your mill. And if you start seeing some changes in your flour, remember you're the customer. So talk to them and tell them, no, no, I want you to maintain the MTIs here as much as you can. And when you're not, at least give me a call or a red flag so I can kind of watch the mix before it happens. Also, log into Bakerpedia. They have great, great tools and, and papers for you to read on flower quality and, and machines that you can use to develop better understanding of them. All righty. We'll catch you next time, guys.